John, I mean, this is voluntary. Omar Jackson's not out here. Have you talked to him, or do you have a, a, a sense of his plan over these weeks? Yeah, we've been we've been down this road many times, right, through the years. So um, I'll just let Lamar speak for himself on that. It's for him to talk about. You can ask him. John, traditionally, quarterback is kind of that exception. We know veterans aren't here voluntarily quite often, but is it a concern not having them here? It's, it's not for me to speak for somebody else on that. You know, it's it's uh, it's up to him to speak for himself on that. John Harbaugh, Ravens coach, playing it the way that he has to play it. Not allowed to say or do anything to create the impression that participation in off-season workouts is anything but voluntary, even the OTAs. Now, we have talked this week, Chris, about a variety of players, each of whom had, with the exception of Aaron Rodgers, an important business reason for not being there. Short-term, long-term contractual expectations, right. whether it's Debo Samuel wanting his now, whether it's Kyler Murray, we're going to talk about him in a little bit, wanting his long-term security. Aaron Rodgers, no reason for him, frankly, right. to not be there, especially when you consider the current state of their receiver room. He should be there. You and I agree on that, even yeah. though it is voluntary. Lamar Jackson, this just adds to this weird the weirdest thing ass ever. mystery. Right. Lamar Jackson, take our money. No thanks. Lamar Jackson, you know, you play the quarterback position in a highly physical way that exposes you to the risk of injury that most other quarterbacks don't have. So you'd probably better take our money before something happens that would cause us to not want to give you that money or anyone else to want to give you the money. No, nah, thank you. I'm fine. Refuses to engage the team, pushes back against the idea that he wants out when people try to figure out why it is they won't take the team's money and is instead working his way toward the Kirk Cousins two franchise tags and out the door if it even gets to that point. I think the Ravens get exasperated and trade him before it gets to that point. Don't know that, but I think that happens before they'd ever go two straight years under the franchise tag and the first tag year is next year. Now on top of it, he's not there for the OTAs. Hollywood Brown is gone. They're trying to get Rashad Bateman into that number one receiver role. You got other guys in there and Lamar Jackson not participating in the OTAs. Yeah. And, Injuries and, at the and, end and of last what? year. Players hurt. Him hurt. They're, they're, they lost continuity that way. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just added No, you're your fine. Point. Har Harbaugh, number one, did the right thing because coaches can't say anything to suggest it's not voluntary. But number two, it's the perfect way to, to tee this up. Like, hey – Lamar can speak for himself, and yeah. I'd kind of like to hear what he has to say. Yeah, I, feel I like don't that's know. What he was saying. I feel like that's what he was yeah. saying. Right. I'm with I don't you. know why the hell he's not here. Right. He hasn't him. told us. Yeah. I, I, Ask I, him because he won't tell me. Yeah. I, I I mean, you said it right. It just it adds to the weirdness. I don't get it. I don't. The whole thing, the contract situation. And I, I, I don't understand. Again, I know Lamar Jackson. He, he's a hard worker. He's dedicated. I, know, I don't doubt that he's not getting his work done wherever he's at right now in South Florida or wherever. I, I don't doubt that. I, I think he's fully invested in the sport. But I still don't understand why he wouldn't be there. You know, for all the reasons you said, first off. And, you know, again, I, I sometimes I just I boil it down to, like, I go back to, you know, I've heard Lamar Jackson say he wants to win Super Bowls. He wants to win a bunch of Super Bowls. I mean, I think there was a time where he was like, I want to be like Brady. He remember him saying that early in his career. Well, Brady wouldn't be missing OTAs in year four of his career. I just That's where I want to say to some of these young quarterbacks. They always – I hear, like, oh, I want to be like Brady. I want to have a career like Brady. Well, then do what Brady does. Brady didn't miss an OTA until he had played in four Super Bowls and, you know, started to get married and then started to miss a few OTAs. But then things didn't go that great in 2010 and 11 and 12. And you know what he started doing? I'm going to be back at OTAs. I'm going to get a little bit better and we need this. Uh, that's where just from the football standpoint, I, I just don't get it. I don't at all. At one point, the owner of the team, Steve Bishotti, said that he believes, and I think this is the message he has sent, that Lamar Jackson is committed to having the best possible season he can, winning a Super Bowl, and then that's when he deserves his second contract. So if that's true, he should be there. If, if he's motivated to have the best season ever before he earns the contract that he already has earned, yeah. but if he thinks there's more he needs to do to earn that contract – then you should be there. A hundred percent. If you're all in, if you're committed, if this is all about having the best possible Lamar Jackson season that you can have, then you should be there. Because otherwise, it makes no sense. Well, yeah, exactly. And and to couple, you know, like you you laid it out. 
you know, got new tight ends, got a new receiver you're trying to work here, some other receivers you're trying to break in. And at, 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 in, in, in all honesty, too, here's the other part of it. I mean, that last year was Lamar Jackson's worst year of his career so far. I mean, he, he, he did not play as good as he's played previous to that. He was not the same guy. I mean, he's still electric and one of the biggest difference makers in the world. I get that, but still had more moments of inconsistency and not playing to a Lamar Jackson type level to where I would think that would add to let me get back in there and let's get back in the lab and start working out here. So that's where, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really surprised because I just, I don't think, I don't feel like it was, it's in his DNA to be like this or whatever. Maybe he just has taken a few days off. Maybe he just went, ah, I'm going to miss the first three OTAs. I don't know, but still, still seems odd to me. And, and I'm with you. I think he should be there. But he still knows what message that sends, or he should know yeah, what he message should know, that sends. Right. And again, if right. the goal is to have a Super Bowl championship season and be the best Lamar Jackson ever, you'd be there for every OTA. You've had plenty of time off. You have time off after that. This is about getting your – if this is true, that the objective is to be as good as you can be this season and set yourself up for your payday after that, then logic would suggest that he be there. But there isn't a whole lot of logic that operates here. And it occurred to me as we were talking about this, Chris, and I know that even though he's not – represented by a traditional agent there are people who are advising him I don't know if he's listening I don't know what kind of advice he's getting he's either ignoring good advice or he's getting bad advice frankly and we've been you know people get mad oh leave the man alone it's like look I'm trying to help the guy we're trying to help the guy the guy's making a mistake the guy's putting millions of dollars at risk when he doesn't need to they're ready to pay him I wonder if at some level he thinks that the way he's performed means that the team shouldn't even try to negotiate with him, that they should just drop on the table in front of him top-of-the-market money, mm. an offer that he would accept, an offer that he can't refuse. I shouldn't even have to negotiate with you. We shouldn't have to sit down and hash this out. You should just come to me with Deshaun Watson's contract, $230 million fully guaranteed over five years, and maybe even more than that because I won an MVP and he didn't. Right. But – I, I just can't help but wonder whether, from his perspective, there is logic. It's very simple. It's very basic. It's very clean. You want me to sign a long-term contract? Don't force me to get my hands dirty with all this back and forth. Just, just give me, give me the contract that you're ultimately going to give me anyway. Put it on the table and let's go. Make me the highest-paid player in league history. Do it and let's go. Put it there, and when I realize that it is what it needs to be, I'll accept it. I, I don't admit it's yeah. hard for a team to do that because you if you put your bottom line out there, you're going to get negotiated away from it. And and if you put it out there as a taker to leave it bottom line, that sends a bad message, too. So I, I just I, I just can't help but wonder whether that's the only yeah. thing that makes sense here, that he's upset that they haven't just come to him with a non-negotiable without saying non-negotiable, but a no need to negotiate bottom line big package, make him the highest paid player. And, uh, and the fact that they haven't done that is what has him miffed. I don't know. I don't know, but maybe, I mean, there, there's something going on. Something strange is, is going on I here. Know. It's not in his interest to be doing this. No. And they, and you know, I mean, as you stated, I mean, they seem to be willing to pay him, you know, up to the top tier of the market. It, it doesn't seem like, I don't know whether they're going to make him just the hands-down highest-paid guy. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to do that. I, I'm sorry. As much as I love Lamar Jackson, the style of football he plays and everything there, I wouldn't want to make him the highest-paid quarterback in football. It would, it would scare me a little bit. It would. You know, again, some of the other guys that have been paid, you know, whether you go Mahomes or Josh Allen or even Deshaun Watson, the one thing I'll say about them is they've shown – the ability, in my opinion, to go, wait, even when we can't run or do that, like we're still going to be really awesome in the pocket and be able to carve you up that way. Lamar Jackson, it's good there, but it's not to their level to where you go, well, when he loses a step or two, we know he'll carve people up in the pocket still, no problem. I, I think that's still debatable. And from that standpoint and then the style of play and the year we're at in the career, I wouldn't want to pay him – just hey, here you go, two hundred and fifty million guaranteed or something like that. Absolutely not. I would, I would definitely tread lightly there. But they got to find that sweet spot, and they seem to like. 
from everything we hear from Baltimore, it seems like they're willing to go, you know, hey, here's the sweet spot for us, but we'll go a little over to your side because we like you so much. I mean, it seems that way from the language they use, but like we've said, it's weird and I don't know. It's awkward for them. They would much rather he be represented by an agent. And if he had one of the best quarterback agents, and I've said this before, it's not all that hard to put a list together. Four or five of the top quarterback agencies, they could work out a deal fairly quickly. And yes, he would have to pay them a small percentage of the total gross amount, but he would end up with more than he has now. Definitely more than he would get on his own. And uh, it would be money well spent because he would be eliminating the risk of some sort of an injury that would make him not attractive to that degree to the Ravens or some other team. We talked about Kaepernick earlier and his time with Greg Roman in San Francisco. And this is something we've discussed with Jackson in the past. Why aren't they unlocking the passing ability with Jackson that we saw with Kaepernick? You know, those two Green Bay games, the end of 2012, the start of 2013. 2012 playoffs, he runs roughshod over the Packers. Playoff record for a quarterback in rushing 185 yards, I think it was something like that. Week one of the next season, Packers 49ers. The Packers determined to keep him from running, and he slices and dices them for 400-plus passing yards. When you take away the run, well, for, I feel like with the Ravens, they try to take away the run by Lamar Jackson, and it still works, so he still keeps running. And I really would love to know when they get into the throes of calling the plays, calling the game, do they keep going back to the plays that they know work, even though they would like to throw the ball? Does Lamar Jackson exercise discretion to not throw and take off and run? There's there's an answer somewhere Definitely. in I think there's a, the play-in and play-out approach yeah. that, that either he's choosing not to throw it or Greg Roman is dialing up these plays where he runs the ball because like a kid playing Madden or, or a grown man, as the case may be, I got three plays that work, and I just keep using them over and over again. Well, I mean, yeah, I, there there is some of that. I do. I think like you, you kind of hit on all, and I think it can kind of be all of those things. You know, one, hey, Kaepernick, when he was doing that stuff, the league was still getting used to it, and like, holy crap, how do we defend all these things? I don't know what the hell to do. It's ten years later. There's been a few teams that have run this type of offense where they understand maybe now how to defend it a little bit better. So I would say that. You know, we, you and I have definitely had the conversation of, hey, you know, I wish Greg Roman and that passing offense was a hair more creative. You know, I, I sure, I mean, maybe, but I don't like sit there and just go, oh man, the offense is, it's really limited. It's still good enough. But I think maybe there's some of the aspect you're talking about from Lamar's aspect too. Hey, we don't need to make it overly complicated. We're going to run the ball. We got this group of passing plays. And if this passing play doesn't work, well, we got a guy that can kind of get out of the pocket and make things happen that way. But at some point, you know, and I think that's what we saw a little last year is, wait, maybe not going to make all the magic all the time. And we need to have a little bit more in the passing offense and be better at executing that. And, hey, whether it's Greg Roman needs to expand a little bit and Lamar needs to give them the confidence to expand to a degree because there's certainly games down the stretch before he got hurt where, you know, he wasn't seeing the field that well. He was missing receivers. He was making bad decisions. You know, but so, so there's growth there for sure. But I think you're kind of right. There's a few things that are at play there to why it is what it is in Baltimore. Um, in Arizona, there's another issue as it relates to the quarterback. And this one isn't about failure to engage by the player. This is failure to act by the team. Kyler Murray and his agent made it known early in the offseason. They were ready to have a new contract. The team wasn't ready. The team apparently is getting closer. The bottom line is, how do you find a middle ground between the Cardinals and Kyler Murray? Where is that sweet spot? Can they find a compromise when you consider how broad that market is at the top? $30 million spreading number one and number 10 on the highest paid quarterback. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.